Okay, so now in order to proceed further, so I need one more definition. It's just a small extension of what we already know. So B in C to the N cross N is said to be Hermitian and positive semi-definite. which I'll often abbreviate by PSD. It is Hermitian and X Hermitian BX is greater than or equal to zero for every X in C to the N. So the only difference uh, from a positive definite matrix is that um, the inequality becomes a greater than or equal to zero and it's okay for it to hold for every x in c to the n. We don't have the restriction that x must be a non-zero vector. Of course, for defining positive definite matrices, I cannot allow x equal to zero because x emission bx will be equal to zero. So I won't be able to satisfy a strict inequality constraint if uh, uh, if I want to define positive definite matrices. But for positive semi-definite matrices, we can allow x to be equal to zero because after all the condition is that it should be greater than or equal to zero. And we'll denote this by b greater than or equal to zero like this. And I may even write it as b greater than or equal to zero, but uh, unless, um, unless I explicitly say otherwise, b greater than or equal to zero means positive semi-definite. It does not mean that the entries, all the entries of B are real and non-negative. Okay. So, um, so once we define these positive semi-definite matrices, we can now talk about um, what is called a monotonicity theorem, which says that all the eigenvalues of a Hermitian matrix, matrix uh, cannot or none of the eigenvalues can decrease or they will all increase but either increase or remain the same if you add a positive semi-definite matrix to, to the matrix. So it's the following corollary. Let A and B be N cross N Hermitian symmetric matrices and B is positive semi-definite. Arrange the eigenvalues of A and A plus B in increasing order. Then lambda k of A is less than or equal to lambda k of A plus B. One, two, up to n. Okay. Um, this directly follows from the previous theorem because um, Uh, in fact, all you need is the lower inequality. Okay, one um, immediate consequence of x emission bx being greater than or equal to zero is that lambda, or actually here, this lower inequality, I'll use a different color, this lower inequality, because one immediate consequence of lambda, uh, of b being a positive semi-definite matrix is that x emission bx is greater than or equal to zero for all x and so all the eigenvalues are greater than or equal to zero in particular lambda one of b is uh, greater than or equal to zero and so um, lambda k of a plus b is going to be greater than or equal to lambda k of a plus uh, uh, some non-negative quantity so basically if i drop this non-negative quantity the inequality will still hold 
and so lambda k of a will be less than or equal to lambda k of a plus b. So that's the that's what the result also says. Now um, uh, another thing is that once you start looking at um, uh, positive semi-definite matrices, you can actually say more about these eigenvalues. Uh, it's not just the smallest and eigen largest eigenvalues of B that you need to use in order to bound the kth eigenvalue of A plus B. You can actually prove um, uh, much more sophisticated results about the location of these eigenvalues. And these kinds of uh, bounds um, often take the form of what is known as an interlacing theorem. And there are many interlacing theorems in linear algebra. So we'll discuss a few of these interlacing theorems. The first interlacing theorem we're going to discuss is uh, for the case where B is a rank one matrix. So that's the following theorem. So as, uh, as before, um, let A be an N cross N Hermitian symmetric matrix. And uh, Z be a vector in C to the N. If the eigenvalues of A and A plus or minus Z, Z Hermitian, this Z is the same as this Z, although I wrote it differently, are arranged. This Z plus Z, Z, A, sorry, A plus Z, Z Hermitian and A minus Z, Z Hermitian are two different matrices, but whatever I'm going to say is valid for both those matrices. So that's why I'm combining them and writing it as A plus or minus Z, Z Hermitian in increasing order. We have two parts to it. Lambda K of A plus or minus Z, Z Hermitian is less than or equal to lambda K plus one of A is less than or equal to lambda K plus two of A plus, uh, plus or minus Z, Z Hermitian. And this is true for K equal to 1, 2, up to n minus 2. Of course, this when I have k plus 2 here, k can only go up to n minus 2. And b, lambda k of a is less than or equal to lambda k plus 1 of a plus or minus z, z Hermitian is less than or equal to lambda k plus 2 of a. Okay, so what this result is saying is that um, the k plus one eigenvalue of A okay, can be bounded by, it can be bounded below by the k eigenvalue of A plus or minus Z, Z Hermitian and upper bounded by the k plus two eigenvalue of A plus or minus Z, Z Hermitian. And similarly, the k plus one eigenvalue of A plus or minus Z, Z Hermitian is lower bounded by lambda k of A and upper bounded by lambda k plus 2 of A. So in particular, um, if I write all the eigenvalues from k equal to 1, 2 up to uh, n minus 2 of A and A plus or minus Z, Z Hermitian, then I approximately this is what I have, lambda 1 of A, that is this when I put k equal to 1 here is less than or equal to lambda 2 of a plus or minus z, z Hermitian. Um, yeah. So it's less than or equal to, so this is lambda two and 
k plus 2 becomes lambda 3 of a less than or equal to now lambda 3 of a i can take k equal to 3 here lambda 4 of a plus or minus z z hamitian less than or equal to lambda 5 of a and so on and if i start with this part a here lambda 1 of a plus or minus z z hamitian less than or equal to lambda 2 of a less than or equal to lambda 3 of a plus or minus z z hamitian less than or equal to lambda 4 of a less than or equal to etc okay so that is what these two inequalities say okay let's see how to show this so the starting point is again the the kuran fisher theorem so let k um, be some number n minus 2. Okay, that's what we have in the condition here. And use the Coulomb Fisher theorem. So I'll start with. Um, lambda this quantity lambda k plus 2 a plus or minus z z hamitian this is equal to the min over w1 up to w let me go back here so for lambda k it's the min over w1 through wk so if i want lambda k plus 2 I must do min w1 to w n minus k minus 2. These in c to the n, then max over x not equal to 0 and x perpendicular to w1 through w n minus k minus 2. X hermitian a plus or minus z z hamitian x over and this in turn is greater than or equal to so this is a slightly clever step in the proof the min over the same quantity w n minus k minus 2 in c to the n the max over x not equal to 0 and x perpendicular to w1 through w n minus k minus 2 and x perpendicular to z x hamitian a plus or minus z z hamitian x over x hamitian x why is this true it's true because all I'm doing is adding one more constraint here. So whatever max this could achieve, maybe this cost function cannot achieve as, as great a maximum value because it's a more constrained optimization problem. So this will be smaller than this. Now, if X is perpendicular to Z, this term here is X Hermitian Z, Z Hermitian X. So that term just drops off. So I can drop that term and write it uh, in the following way this is equal to the min over w1 through w n minus k minus 2 in c to the n and i'll just define a w n minus k minus 1 to be equal to z and then i'll say the maximum is over all x not equal to 0 and x being perpendicular to w1 up to w n minus k minus 1. 
Okay, that's the same as saying x is perpendicular to z. And my cost function is now x hemisphere ax over x hemisphere x. Now, instead of minimizing it subject to this constraint that w n minus k minus 1 equals z, if I just drop this constraint and allow w n minus k minus 1 to be any vector in c to the n, I can possibly achieve a lower minimum than what is achieved by this cost function here or this objective function here, or rather this optimization problem here. So I have a further lower bound by allowing w n minus k minus 1 to be anything. So that is the min over w1 through w n minus k minus 1 in c to the n, the maximum x not equal to 0, x perpendicular to w1 through w n minus k minus 1 of x hemisphere ax over x hemisphere x. And by Kura Fischer theorem, this is exactly what we equal to um, lambda k plus 1 of a. Okay. So you can see that uh, the proof involves this interesting step of saying, so if x was perpendicular to z, you would get a lower bound on the first cost function. And then <clears throat> you push the constraint into this w n minus k minus 1 and then you allow that to become arbitrary and both those steps are lower bounding steps and um, that gives you lambda k plus 1 of a. Similarly, I can do the other way. So let K be in so the the um, um, the, the theorem uh, proving the theorem involves proving four inequalities okay and this proves one of them uh, I'll do one more and but basically from these inequalities the theorem follows two three up to n minus one so if I look at lambda k of a plus or minus z, z Hermitian. This is equal to, now I'll use the max min version. This is the max over w1 to w k minus 1 in c to the n of the minimum over x not equal to 0, um, x perpendicular to w1 through wk minus 1, x hemation a plus or minus z, z hemation x over x hemation x. This is just Kora Fischer theorem, which is then less than or equal to the max over the same constraint as the previous, the minimum over x not equal to 0 x perpendicular to w1 through wk minus 1 and now I'll throw in an extra constraint that x is perpendicular to z um, of x hemation a plus or minus z z hemation x over x hemation x and now since I've thrown in this extra constraint that x is perpendicular to z this minimum may not be able to achieve as low a minimum as this optimization problem and therefore this is an upper bound and uh, this now the next steps are exactly the same as before so I'll do the max over instead of uh, I have w1 through wk minus 1 in c to the n c to the n and I will set uh, wk equal to z of the minimum x not equal to 0, x perpendicular uh, for, to w1 through wk of x hemation and I can drop this term because x is perpendicular to z here, so ax over x hemation x 
and then I'll neglect this constraint WK equal to Z and thereby I can possibly achieve an even higher maximum than this optimization problem. So I have max over W1 through WK in C to the N, the min over X not equal to zero, X perpendicular to W1 through WK of X Hermitian AX over X Hermitian X and by kurov fischer theorem, this is exactly equal to lambda K plus one of A. Okay, and so the inequalities in the statement of the theorem follow from these inequalities. Okay, notice that uh, we use the max min formulation to prove an upper bound on uh, an eigenvalue and we use the min max formulation to prove a lower bound on the on an eigenvalue. Okay, okay, and this is something that you will notice um, in many results that we show going forward. Okay. Um, now, one um, useful fact to keep in mind is that uh, if uh, uh, if b is um, in c to the n cross n okay, let me put it this way and is a hermitian symmetric matrix then that means that uh, it is uh, unitarily diagonalizable and it's a non-defective matrix. And so for such a matrix, we can write B as U lambda U Hermitian, where uh, the matrix uh, U contains the eigenvectors of uh, B and lambda is a diagonal matrix containing the eigenvalues of B. So U is unitary. And lambda is diagonal. Now, um, so let's say lambda is equal to, sorry. Of uh, lambda one through lambda n. So um, these lambda one to lambda n are the eigenvalues of B. Now in this case, because B is non-defective, um, the rank of B is equal to the number of non-zero eigenvalues. Okay, and um, in particular, if rank of B equals say R, then Only some uh, only some R eigenvalues here will be non-zero, and the remaining will be equal to zero. So I can say that um, lambda R plus one up equal to etc. up to equal to lambda n is equal to zero. Um, and so in fact we can write Um, B as sigma I equal to one to R beta I, sorry, lambda I times U I U I Hermitian. Okay, and conversely. Um, any matrix of this form of the form sigma i equal to 1 to r 
lambda i u i u i Hermitian, where u1 up to ur are linearly independent, has a rank at most r. And if um, if all these lambda i's are uh, not equal to zero, okay, let me put it this way. Um, yeah, let me write it in the following way. And lambda i not equal to zero has rank r if um, if um, ui's are not known to be a linear ui's are not known to be linearly independent then it has rank at most r. Okay, this fact will actually turn out to be quite useful. Uh, so, for example, a rank one matrix can be written as some lambda times u u, u Hermitian for some vector uh, u, which is uh, non-zero. Um, so a, a rank one Hermitian symmetric matrix can be written as some lambda one times u u Hermitian and so on. Okay, so the next result that I want to share, share is also an interlacing theorem. And this is uh, about uh, what happens if you pad a matrix by a row and column to get a matrix whose size is one more than the matrix you started with. So it reads like this. So suppose uh, A is in C to the N cross N and is Hermitian. And um, Y is in C to the N. And A is a real number. And these are given. Okay, then let A hat denote the matrix A and Y, Y Hermitian and the small a. This is a matrix of size N plus one. Cross N plus one. OK, so question is how are the eigenvalues of A related to that of A hat? So no, remember that A hat has n plus one eigenvalues and A has only n eigenvalues. So let the eigenvalues of A and A hat be arranged in increasing order, okay? And denote them by lambda i and lambda hat i respectively. So this is actually i equal to 1 to n and this is i equal to 1 to n plus 1. Then um, lambda one hat is less than or equal to lambda one is less than or equal to lambda two hat is less than or equal to lambda two less than or equal to lambda n minus one less than or equal to lambda n hat less than or equal to 
lambda n is less than or equal to lambda n plus 1 hat. Okay. So this is the interlacing theorem. So what it says is that the largest eigenvalue of this matrix is going to be bigger than the largest eigenvalue of A. The smallest eigenvalue of this matrix, lambda 1 hat, is going to be smaller than the smallest eigenvalue of A. So all the eigenvalues, and but not only that, all the eigenvalues of A hat interlace between pairs of eigenvalues of A. So lambda 2 hat is going to be between lambda 1 and lambda 2. Lambda 3 hat is going to be between lambda 2 and lambda 3. Lambda n hat is going to be between lambda n minus 1 and lambda n. So the, one, the, the last but one largest or the second largest eigenvalue of A hat is between the largest eigenvalue of A and the second largest eigenvalue of A. But the largest eigenvalue of A hat is greater than or equal to the largest eigenvalue of A. 